Well, I think he's a colleague of yours now at GB News. He certainly is popping up on most Saturday nights. Is John Cleese, the legend of British comedy. Well, he decided to tweet the bleedingly obvious here, which is, I've asked this question before. If I do not agree with some of the transgender arguments, this apparently makes me transphobic. So... If they do not agree with some of my opinions, does that make them cleese-phobic? Or does the hatred only flow in one direction? Sadly, we all know the answer. Yeah, we do. It all flows in one direction. And we get these groups, these special interest groups, who inevitably, many of them finish up with public funding from governments, and they give an absolutist line. It is as if we're living back in a sort of Marxist state where anyone that disagrees with the, with the narrative that's been proposed is somehow evil and bad. Total obedience to the language is what is demanded. So John Cleese is quite right to raise the issue. Um, I do think, though, there are one or two examples of, of the pendulum beginning to swing back. You know, Nicola Sturgeon lost her job in Scotland as the First Minister partially because of, of, of trans legislation that went way against where the majority is. So, uh, you know, let's not give up on this. The pendulum will, in the end, swing back towards common sense. I'm confident of that. Something that I love uh, when it comes to lefties, and it's almost like pouring a glass of water into their circuits, is when a person of colour turns around and calls out a talking point of the left that to have concerns about the consequences of mass immigration, well, has previously been written off by the white left as racist. But again, when a woman of colour talks about it as, no, a reasonable thing to talk about, in this case, Suella Braverman, who's in the Cabinet, in there as a minister, well, they all freak out. Firstly, her uh, comments this week. It's not xenophobic to say that mass and rapid migration is unsustainable in terms of housing supply, public services or community relations. Nor is it bigoted to say that we have too many asylum seekers in this country for whom we have insufficient accommodation. That absorbing more and more people means building more and more homes is another one of those unfashionable facts that the Open Borders Brigade would say means we're starting a culture war. That sound you can hear, uh, heads exploding on Twitter, Nigel, and I'm fine with it. <laughs> well, I think I gave my first speech using exactly those lines in 2003. Uh, and I made this a major part of my political campaign leading up to the Brexit referendum, that we had to get control of our borders, we had to reduce the massive inflow, the massive net inflow into our country every year. Otherwise, people can't get houses, can't see a doctor, can't travel anywhere because the roads are clogged and our quality of life diminishes. So I'm pleased that the Home Secretary is standing up and saying those things. Only problem is... She's the Home Secretary for a political party who've been in power now for 13 years, who've totally failed to control, firstly, the small boats over the English Channel, secondly, the numbers legally coming into Britain, um, and, frankly, uh, there are millions of us who voted Brexit who now feel the Conservatives have failed us on this. There was a specific promise to take back control... And actually, it's now out of control. So, you know, if Suella was an opposition politician, it might have more credibility. The fact she says it as a representative of this total failure um, is, is an odd position. But look, you can bet one thing for certain, this issue has already cost the Conservatives the next general election. Yeah, it's over. It's done.